Charlie's dead, and uh, he's the only one that had a death wish. There's no one's gonna take that handyman job. Did you boys say someone was looking for a handyman? Old Anson place. So what, you people don't work out anything for families? The winter's coming, I have to keep the power on. Make an exception. I have some work coming up, just give me two weeks. I'm so sorry, sir, but I can give you three more days, and after that, All right, we're I'll try to come up with it. Your service off. Here's your phone, I gotta get ready. Hey, I found some work. With Miss Hanson. I'm going over to the Hanson place. Dad, no! What? She's crazy. They say she killed her father. I have to pay the bills. I can't put food on the table anymore. No amount of money is worth dying. It's just some old hag. Some witch or something, okay? I'll be fine. I gotta go. Look, don't worry about the rumors. Just stay away from the gossip, okay? Everything's gonna be fine. Well, here's some advice for you, Dad. Watch your back. She'll suck you dry like a spider. I'll see you later. I may be lonely, yet I'm not alone. The Lord is with me, and he'll bring you home. But I miss your touch And the smile in your eyes The devil tempts me With his terrible lies
knock at my door Is that you We're taunting evermore My heart is beating Through my chest My love has returned And I am blessed I wasn't expecting company today I'm the handyman I'm looking for Miss Hanson that's me. Yeah, you're Miss Hanson. <laughs> wow. You sure don't look like Miss Hanson. What do you expect? Well, the boys down at the strawberry patch told me all about you. I don't get out much. Said you were some old hag, some witch or something. Maybe I am. Everybody around town's scared of you and this property. <laughs> but I'm not. And I'm here to help. I need new barn doors put on the barn. I can do that. Looks like it needs more than barn doors. It does need a lot of work. But right now I just need the barn doors. How long have you lived here? My whole life. My father recently passed. I recently lost my father also. He was here to fix the barn. Well, I didn't mean to intrude. I'm sorry. So I need a strong guy. They're over here. Oh, God. First reaction's to run and run fast. <laughs> I'm out of here on top of this. Uh. Okay, okay, Chris. Hang in there. There's a loose cannon boys at the strawberry patch for right. Are you okay? Okay, well that's probably what happened to the barn. You can't tug on it like that. Acting like a wild woman. Look, I feel bad. I didn't mean to get you talking about your dad. But ma'am, you have a problem. A problem? I'm fine, okay? I'm, I'm really fine. I think maybe you need to go downtown and get some counseling. I don't go downtown, I told you. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh at you. Who do you think you are coming up here giving me advice? You're a stranger to me. But you have issues. I don't have a problem, okay? I'm not some cuckoo. Coco Puffs lady that lives on the hill that nobody talks to. I have my reasons for not going to town. You can't just come up here. You know what? Maybe you don't need the job. I can do it in two days. I'll be here at 8 a.m. the next two days and then I'm out. Just go. No, I don't need you here at 8 a.m. If you can't handle it, then I don't, I'll do it myself. I could do it myself. And by the way, I'll pay you when the job is done. This barn needs an exorcism as much as that woman does. Hey, I'm home. Good to see you're not dead, Dad. Your dinner's on the stove. Look, I find out she's not an old hag, because she's smoking hot. Dad, ew. I don't know if you teens understand that or not. That might be the 80s. And that's but, definitely uh, not what us teens say. She has a few screws loose. And I got a few scars, but I made it up. And I'm going back. For two days, I'll be fixing the barn doors. But we got work. Dad, you're way too old to be cool. I am cool. Smoking hot. Come here.
Some of us wake up before dawn to do our chores. I told you I'd be here at 8 a.m. What you been doing? Throwing more cinder blocks? <laughs> no, but maybe now that you're here, I have a reason to. Can I get you some coffee? How'd you know I wasn't going to start working until I had a cup of coffee? Make it fast. No cream, no sugar. I'm a real man. Nice cup. It was my father's. Don't break it. Mm. Some may say I have a death wish for drinking your coffee. I'll take that as a sign of trust. I wouldn't say that I trust you. <laughs> it is time to get to work. Thanks for the coffee. I got your package for you. Oh, thank you. I was shaking it, trying to figure out what was in it. There'll probably be a lot more. Can I get you something to eat? If it's not too much trouble, I'll eat anything you have. You can do my laundry next. Thanks for lunch. I wanted to apologize for my behavior yesterday. I got a teenage daughter at the house. Don't worry about it. Here's a check. A blank check? I don't know how much these things usually cost, so... Just get what you need. I usually discuss how much I charge before the job starts. But because you were throwing cinder blocks, I was kind of scared. Well, look, I'm going to head up to Home Depot before I come in the morning and get what I need, and I'll bring you a receipt back. If you need anything, let me know.
I'll expect you in the morning. I'm gonna leave my tools here, because now I trust you. Good morning. Santa Claus is here. Yay! I'm gonna finish up, I'm almost done. Before you leave today, maybe you could put this in for me. So what's in the box? Big Faye usually does it. Big Faye? She usually hangs out in the back of the strawberry patch. The back of the strawberry patch? She dresses out about 290. She dresses out about 290, I'm 290, wow. I haven't seen her around the strawberry patch. She's gonna be out of town at the Little Debbie convention. Say what? So could you install this for me? So what's in the box? I needed a new light. It's a light fixture. Do you know how to install them? I might be able to do the light fixture before I leave. I'm gonna get back to work. Hello? Miss Hanson? Yes? Are you ready to see the barn? Don't look at it yet, it's a surprise. I'm gonna cover your eyes and take you down there if you trust me. I guess I do. All right, keep your eyes closed. Let's go, let's go. Okay, here we go. Stop right there. All right, open your eyes. They're beautiful. Like that? Okay. I hope you like it. Very nice job. I used four boards from the back of the barn. Got your dad left to give it some character. And I got the rest from Home Depot. Thank you. That means a lot. I did the best I could. I know your father probably could do a lot better work. I'm glad you like it. Thank you. It means a 
alive. It made me proud. It's okay. I'm sure he's watching down on you right now. And he's smiling that you got his old barn suit. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't throw any cinder blocks. I know you don't even know my name yet, but you want a hug? <laughs> no, your wife. I'm divorced. You're divorced. Okay. <laughs> Look at me like I'm some type of murderer. Okay, I'll pass on the hug. <laughs> okay. Um, can the divorce man still do your lighting? Yes, you can. Okay. Excuse the mess. I haven't had company in decades. There's a lot of repairs needed. I'm not worried about it. You should see my house. Wow. You sure need a lot of work done. Looks like a bomb went off in here. It's not that bad. Yeah, I know it needs a lot of work, but that's why you're here. You are right about that. All right, give me a second. Let me tie my shoe. I can't do it. I haven't been scared of anything in my life. But now I'm scared. I'm very scared. The light picture's in one of the boxes back there. I see you got some screws we need. What? Hey, you didn't tell me your name was Faye. You're Big Faye. There's little Debbie's everywhere. Guilty. I'm Big Faye. Your name is Faye. What's up with all the little Debbie's? Yes, I'm Big Faye. It's not easy grieving. My father just passed. <laughs> Look, it's gonna be okay. Put it down. Put it down. Everything's gonna be fine. <laughs> I know it's hard. Your father just passed. You don't tell me! No! Okay. I understand. But you have to put down the little Debbie's. I do know how it feels to be alone. My wife left me and my kid. I've been alone ever since. You're right. Okay, well. I'm sorry. Let's, uh. Share some little Debbie's together, and then we'll get the lighting done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, can I ask you a question? Yes. 
Why do you live up here all alone? Why don't you go to town? I choose to live out of the world. Too much of a den of sin out there. We're all sinners. Some sin more than others. Well, the difference is who tries not to sin. Who actually loves God and wants to be obedient. Well, who takes their salvation as a ticket to go sin and live free and party and think they're going to get off on everything that they do in this life? I don't know about you, I don't gamble with salvation. Me either. That's why I stay safe up here on my mountain. You're the first man other than my father I've ever talked to. Wow. It makes me feel special. You're the first woman I've ever spoken to. I was married, but I never talked to her. <laughs> That's why she left. No, I'm joking. My daddy kept me apart from the world. He was a very protective man. been on this mountain my whole life. Never gone to town. And I'm gonna die up here. Never having gone into the world. You gotta go and get groceries. When he was here, he went to town and got the groceries. But now I just have everything delivered. Maybe I can help. Maybe I can go to town and get a few things for you and save you on the 2,000 boxes around the property <laughs> to go with the 2,000 cinder blocks and to save the FedEx drivers from breaking their backs. Stop that, man. Can I ask you a question? Go ahead. Why did your wife leave? Well, to sum it up, she couldn't handle the small town life or the responsibility of a child. And she was an unbeliever, so that didn't make it very easy. Thanks for all your help, Chris. Thank you. For what? This is kind of an answer prayer of mine. So, you're actually giving me more purpose and helping me in other areas. So thank you. By helping an emotionally unstable woman? <laughs> By you helping an emotionally unstable man. <laughs> <laughs> well, my daughter's gonna kill me. I'm gonna have to get this light done and get out of here. I understand. Let me get started. Save me a little Debbie. I'm gonna take it home to my daughter. <laughs> have a whole box. <laughs> no. This isn't a ceiling light, it's a sconce lighting. I thought I was hanging you a light here in the kitchen. A sconce lighting? Sorry. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to do this today. It's gonna take me eight hours to do this. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. I can come back tomorrow. Okay. I'll put it in the dining room. Um. If you want, we could, uh, you could uh, stay for dinner. Um, just for the sake of testing it out. Uh, to make sure it's good and working. Yeah, yeah, I definitely, definitely will have to test out this lighting. Because um, I need to bring an extra tool for it. A meter to check it. That'd be nice. Okay. That that's good. Yeah. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. Strutting. Got my old strut back. <laughs> Shh. 
smoking hot. How's your day? Well, actually, I wanted to talk to you about that. So I went there, I was gonna do the barn, I showed her the barn, she liked it, and then uh, she wanted me to come in and do some lighting. Then it was Little Debbie's, long story, but um, I have a dinner coming up. I don't know what to do, you're gonna have to help me. I haven't had a date in a long time. A but, date? Um, I used to wine and dine, and back in the day, that's how I got your mom, but she's not here anymore, so I don't know what I'm gonna do. But I know you might be jelly. Dad, do you even know what jelly means? It's a teen word that you use in school, right? Yes. Or is it crunchy? Well, that might have been the 80s. Anyway, I heard it on the radio this morning. Okay, well, I talk, I, let me get out of the, let me get out of the truck so I can talk to you in the house. Are you sure you can trust her? She's a little weird because she hasn't spoken to anyone in years. But she's a good Christian woman. I can trust her. I don't know if you know this, but you're a little weird. So I need your help. I don't know what to wear. I really don't know what to say. I know I used to whine and dine your mother back in the day, but she's gone now. You see how well that worked out for me. All right, I'll help you but you have to pay attention and follow my rules. It's time to take you to school. What do you do when she asks you a question? I don't know. I don't know. What do you do? Okay, okay. You rephrase the question so she can do all the talking. Very good. Somebody help me. What exactly does this have to do with a date? Last question. When are women right? Sometimes. Always! Women are always right! Uh, 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 I got nowhere else to go. Eat. I have OCD, man. I am not eating a burnt hot dog. I've never burned a hot dog in my entire Eat. life. Oh. Eat the hot dog now. Is that good enough? Again. Okay. So I have to compliment her even if it comes out like this. Okay, all right, let me practice. Wonderful meal, um, Faye. Hmm. Nice and crispy. Horrible! Disastrous! Very tasty, Miss Hanson. It really leaves a lingering taste in your mouth. Mmm, so good. Makes me just want to rip it apart. This really, this really gives you that, that, that feeling, that feeling you get in your, your stomach kind of low, very low in your stomach. Again. Very amazing meal tonight, Miss Hanson. Almost as amazing as you. Wonderful. That's it. Perfect. Make sure you're quiet and make sure you listen to her. It'd also be nice if you could lose 20 pounds, but from the looks of it, that's obviously not gonna happen in one night. Don't burp, don't fart, make sure you smell fantastic, make sure you look fantastic, make sure you give her plenty of compliments, and above all, no sarcasm. Why? I hope you don't mind. 
I borrowed your brush. Dad, don't get dandruff in my brush. Come on, this is my last chance to impress. I have to make a good impression. I'm getting too old. You're gonna ruin my hair! I have to impress her. You want me going in looking like a crazy man? You know, if this goes over well, I'm gonna have to get you your driver's license because I'm gonna be busy. You don't got nothing to say now, do you? I'll use your brush every night before I head over to Miss Hanson's. Okay. You can use my brush as much as you like. Wow, you look amazing. Thank you. Nice shirt. Thank you. All my cutoffs were dirty, so I had to wear this one. I'm not used to seeing you in black. You usually wear all white. It's feeling worldly today. I get it. Black, you're going through a dark phase. Something like that. <laughs> Uh, lighting. Lighting. I'm hungry. Thanks for coming. Well, I wasn't going to turn down a free meal. Especially from a beautiful woman. Now let's get this party started. I put the light in the dining room. <laughs> Nothing. I was just talking to myself. I'm reading the directions. So what's for dinner? Enchiladas from scratch. Ooh. So do you have any other family? I had a brother named Butch. He died in the war. I'm sorry to hear that. I never knew my mother. I never knew my mother either. It was just me and my dad. Now it's just me. Kind of like you and your daughter. Yeah, it's just like me and my daughter. I'm gonna go start dinner. You can wash up in the bathroom. Don't burn my food, woman. There's that sarcasm. I was beginning to think you weren't gonna have any today. I'll admit, I've been a little nervous. When I'm nervous, I'm quiet. I'll give you more sarcasm as the night goes on. Ready to see your new light? It's perfect. Thank you. You deserve some light in the dining room. You can't eat in the dark. <laughs> Plus, it gives me an excuse to have dinner with you tonight, right? I hope my cooking can live up to your handyman skills. You do good work. I think I'll keep you around. Ah, uh, yes, Miss Hanson. I am a food critic. So be ready tonight. Chris, this is it. Do not screw it up. Okay? No more silly man. It's time to get serious. So, tell me what's happening at your house. What's the scoop on your dad? My dad's been super annoying lately. He's in love, and he thinks he's so cool. But I thought he's, like, ancient. People still date at his age? Her name is the one and only Miss Hansen. He'll be dead before the sun rises over the mountain. Okay.
Faye, are you okay? Look, if this is too much for you, I can leave. It's, it's not that. Is there something I did wrong? You don't understand. It's not that big of a deal. If you really don't want me here, or if I did something wrong, just let me know. No, Chris, it's the onions. Oh, <laughs> you had me going. You almost gave me a heart attack. I make really spicy salsa. I hope you can hang with the spice. The onions? Yeah, I'll take some salsa. I'm sorry. It's awesome. Dinner's going to be ready in a minute. Through many trials and tribulations, the Lord has taught me patience. I can wait for dinner. I'm going to go sit down and get out of your way. Nice place you have here. So she's going to bring dinner out. And then I'm going to compliment her cooking. Okay. And then I'm going to compliment her again and again and again and again. And I'm going to keep my mouth shut and just listen. Because women just want a man that's going to listen. Okay, okay. I've been talking too much. Are you talking to me, Oh, nothing. I'm just uh, talking to myself and saying a good prayer. You do that a lot. I do talk to myself a lot. You know how it is. Some say that, some say that's uh, being bipolar, but I don't know. I think it's just being alone for too long. Yeah, definitely has a lot of that. Dinner's ready. Oh, goody. I hope you like it. Wow. I'm a loss for words. Thank you. Would you like some wine? You drank alcohol? I wouldn't have expected that from you. Wine's good for the stomach. Timothy? I'll take it. You got me there. The Bible does say wine's good for the stomach. It feels nice to cook for someone again. You're actually doing me a favor. And all the work you're doing has been a great help to me. I haven't had a home-cooked meal in years. I've been using the microwave every night. Hey, I was thinking, uh, maybe next Friday we can go to town. I'll take you to dinner and a movie. I'm sorry. I can't do that. I'll never be able to do that. Well, you can't live in fear. You gotta have faith. It's one or the other. You can't have fear and faith. You can't stay up here scared your whole life. It's not that easy. You can't just expect me to walk out into the world. I've been through trauma myself. I've been heartbroken. 
I've lost everything. It's been hard enough to even feed my daughter. I've been falsely persecuted. Lost my job. But I didn't give up. And I have stayed up late at night having the woulda, coulda, shoulda. But I don't do it anymore. This doesn't get you anything. My mother was seven months pregnant with me when she went to the grocery store. They shot her three times for the pocket change she had. They didn't expect me to live, but it was a miracle. My father was very protective from the moment he brought me home. I can't just abandon everything I've ever known. This is all I've known. And I've been okay with that. I can't expect you or anyone else to understand that. Sure, I'd love to be married. I'd love to have a family. It's not that easy. Look, I'm sorry for bringing up bad memories. And I'm sorry to hear what happened to your mother. That's why I'm alone. Nobody's gonna want a broken woman like me. Look, I, I know what it's like to have a traumatic experience change your life. I never had a mother either. My uh, father just died, and uh, we never really had much of a relationship. He, uh, he lived in fear, and he never left his couch. He had a chance to come spend his life with me and my daughter. But fear got him. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. And so I'm here for you. And I have feelings for you. And perfect love casts out all fear. I can't sit here and let you do this to yourself. I want to be with you. I want to help you through this. I think it'd be better for both of us. I don't want to live with fear. I want you to help me. I'm willing to try. Sorry I brought you home early. I just don't know what to do. What happened? It was a train wreck. Everything went wrong. I don't know, we were talking and I just, 
I just felt an overwhelming feeling of love for this woman. And uh, she expressed her feelings to me, told me a little bit about herself and her family. And I guess I just wanted to rescue her. I don't know if you understand. But anyway, long story short, I'm not gonna keep you up all night. Um, we got to talking, and I got up, and I kissed her. You kissed her on a first date? What kind of creep does that? I know. Okay, it is kind of creepy. I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to court her, and I know. I should wait till we're married, right? Like I always tell you, no kissing until you're married. And I need to lead from the front, not be a hypocrite, right? <laughs> okay, well, maybe that's why I blew it. I kissed her, and she kicked me out. How do you know you're in love with her? When you get my age, and you've been ran over by a tractor, a bus, a car, and a truck, and have experienced a flyby from an airplane, you just know when it's the one. You just know. And I think she's the one. But it's in God's hands. But I really feel like he's putting us together. Like a divine appointment. It's like God put the love right in my heart when I was at the table with her. If you really feel that God put the love in your heart, then you should just tell her. Then she won't think you're such a creep. You're right. Maybe I need to tell her. I don't know why I didn't tell her before I kissed her. Whatever you want to do, Dad, I love you and support you. And even if it means getting a new mom, I'm okay with it. I'm going to pray about it and read the word tonight. See if God can give me the words to say. Thank you for always being here for me. I love you. I took your advice. I woke up before dawn to do my chores. I couldn't sleep at all last night. This scripture kept playing in my head. I wanted to come share it with you. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love always protects. Love is not proud. Love is sacrificial. Love trusts. Love never fails. I'm sorry. Don't worry. I won't try to kiss you again until you're ready. Do you think that's why I kicked you out? Yes, for overstepping my boundaries. No, I got scared. I was having all of these feelings. I wanted you to kiss me, and kiss me again for the rest of my life. 
But then I remembered who I am and what kind of life he would have. A prison. And I love you too much to put you in a prison. I'd rather live in a prison with you than wander freely without you. There was a part of scripture I never mentioned that day in 1 Corinthians 9.22. How Paul talks about becoming all things to save the weak. Love is action, not just words. And if I loved her like Christ, I would put myself in a prison with her in order to break her out. I was ready to fight for her. And not only contend against the enemy for her love, but to come out victorious. I knew with Christ I could do all things. And I was ready to sacrifice myself as a shield in this waging war. Little by little, together, we would chisel away at the prison wall. One day, we would walk out together as one in Christ and fly away. <laughs>